And actually, I think you have to sell something that you really like and love. You can't just go over there for the, the money, right? Uh, the profit margin is really, really good on the, the boots, but that wasn't the reason I, I kind of really liked the actual boots. So you have to like what you do and love it and know everything about it. And pretty much, uh, or pretty much it will, you know, sell for you. Um, but you have to love what you do. It can't just be like, oh, it's good profit right here, you know? Like we started selling this product out of the trunk of our car. Don't be afraid to fail. Inventory management is about balance. Get the product out. That's number one. I've always preached sustainable growth. So we just started building community. Look at the data. Product development is everything. Yeah, we say we're a brick, click, and pop. But you have to love what you do. Hello, everybody. Hello, uh... So we're live here in the Merchant Mastery Facebook group. We're going to be doing these live Q&As every Tuesday and Thursday. And we're going to be bringing some amazing speakers from all across North America and even the world. And if you have any questions, please type them into the either the Facebook message area or in the Q&A section if you are joining us through Zoom. And we're going to be recording this. We'll be resharing it with everybody. But without further ado, today's speaker, I would like to bring him out here. His name is Jose Diaz. He joins us from Santa Clarita, California. He's the founder of Yeehaw Cowboy, which is a remarkable uh, cowboy boot business that disrupted the whole industry. So Jose, I know you uh, got a lot to say today. So thank you so much for joining us and taking time out of your day. For sure, man. Thank you for having me. I can't wait to um, share my input and pretty much help people out there. That's one of the most important things to help each other out. And it just comes back to, to us, you know, when you help people out. Absolutely. No, and I, I, I got a really sense that you were willing to just do, do that today. So thank you. Just so everybody that's tuning in has an idea. I met Jose Diaz in New York City. We were at a conference together last September. I was blown away by his story. This is one of the realest guys I've ever met in my life. He's been at his business for over 10 years. He's an absolute master in Google AdWords. He's been running Google AdWords for 10 years. He's been a, a true pro with Facebook ads for the last four years as well. And from what I know, he's a true innovator and he's always picking up on new platforms and new strat strategies like TikTok and, and some other things. So Jose, why don't we just, before we jump into some of these strategies and takeaways for the people tuning in today, why don't you just tell us a little bit about your background and how you got started as a business? Uh, sure, absolutely. Um, I started in about um, 2012. I was always, uh, actually I was into cowboy boots. I had this other website and it was kind of, you know, bootleg. And I was like, man, this don't feel real, right? So what I did is um, I wanted to sell cowboy boots because I was into like uh, that Mexican music. And I always used to see my uncle with some cool hats and all that. I was like, man, it looks gangster. I want to dress like that, right? So um, I, I started just liking all the boots and the hats. And what I did was uh, I went one day, I was like, I want to put all these boots on a website, right? So I called one of the, the Mexican companies, you could say. I was like, how many boots do you have to buy in order to... Um, you know, uh, have an opening order with you guys. They're like, oh, you just have to buy one. I was like, oh, okay, cool. So they used to have a catalog, right? So uh, what I used to do, I used to scan the catalogs and then just crop the pictures and then put them on my website. And every time I sold one, I just go pick it up, <laughs> pick them up and then ship them myself. And um, that's how pretty much I started. And then uh, I was doing um, AdWords back then already. And I just switched it up to over to the boots. Yeah, you know, they give you that free trial for like a hundred bucks. Of course, um, at the beginning, I just pretty much lost everything because you don't know what you're doing on there. Um, and that's how much I pretty got started. And also what I did is a lot of these um, other brands, they didn't let you um, not have a store to pick them up. So basically, you had to have a store in order to pick up their brands and sell them um, online. So I had to figure out how I can do that. So what I did was um, I, I started doing rodeos, right? So I see um, just buy merchandise, set up at the rodeos, take some cool pictures. I had the whole tent with the logo on there and my truck was wrapped. I had wrapped, wrapped my truck and I, I pretty much just sent those pictures to the um, to these brands that didn't drop ship. And I was like, well, I have a mobile store. Would that work? And they're like, yeah, that's fine. And then once one door opens, everybody 
starts opening. So basically all the brands on there that I have in my website um, are drop ship. And I'm pretty much the first one to actually just have an online store and drop ship. Uh, even to this day, there's like one or two brands that you have to have a brick and mortar store. But once I break, the, break through them too, and then they know that online has been taking over, then I'm pretty sure they'll open the door for me too. And other than that, I just, like you said, I started um, trying different platforms. At first, if you don't have... Um, you know, no guidance, you're going to lose a lot of money. And what the good thing about now is like you have everything online, you can just Google it, take some courses, get an agency, stuff like that. It can help you out. But at first, obviously you lose a lot of money, but now so much help out there that you can figure it out. And that's how much I pretty much got started. And now it's um, doing very, very well. Um, I actually started my own brand. So it's straight to the, to the, you know, the buyer, the customer. It's like pretty much. Um, so basically they're getting, a better price, same quality boot, and for a good deal, pretty much. So that's how everything started. I think that, yeah, that's a, so that's a little recap of that story. It reminds me of uh, Gary V. Gary V was mm -hmm. always saying how he got started, which was working at his parents' liquor store, and then he'd go to a garage sale and buy something, and then he would go resell it on eBay. So yeah, you kind of yeah. you kind of started just you know buying boots and reselling one at a time. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's, that's 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 a, that's a good work ethic and a good way to, to, to start. I mean, like you have a deep appreciation for every product you sell and it sounds yeah. like you just blew up from there. Um, you, you were, it's one of the things I also noticed very much when I go to your website, there's all these high end best brands in the industry, like the best cowboy boot brands, the most famous ones, but then there's your own brand. Yeah. And I, I think that's a, a really interesting approach. If you're a reseller to also manufacture your own products, mm -hmm. because of course there's going to be higher margin and you can sell it for a lower ticket price and probably attract more customers too. Yeah. Not only that, I noticed uh, all these before these brands, like I'm going to give you an example. All these brands didn't sell straight to the consumer. You would have to go through the store and then you buy the actual product, right? So your consumer before you would have to get it through the store. You can't buy it directly from the manufacturer. Right. But now I noticed these past couple of years, um, they started selling straight to the customer, right? So I was like, okay, I better start my own brand because then that's they're gonna they're selling already to the retailer, you know, to the customer. They're gonna, they're already cutting you off, so why not start my own stuff before they cut you off? You know what I mean? Because that's how it's going. It's going straight to the consumer now. All these brands, you know, especially right now, they're like, well, these stores are closed. We're a big manufacturer. What are we gonna do? We have to sell. You know what I mean? So they're gonna sell straight to the consumer. So you're better off starting your own brand or have both a best, best world, you know, best of both worlds and sell both. That's a, that's a very important statement that you just made. I think with e-commerce, like a lot of the brands we work with, a lot of the companies we work with, you can't depend on one revenue stream. Yeah. You know, you got to kind of, like there's often this multi-channel commerce buzzword that goes around out there, but it's not being dependent on one thing. Like if you were only selling the brand boots and all of a sudden their factories closed, you'd be hurt really hard. Yeah, uh, just like a lot of companies right now, the whole side, wholesale side of their business is slowing down, or the brick and mortar side of their yeah. business is slowing down. But at least they have the e-commerce side that they can realign some of the focus. Yeah, and one thing I do probably recommend is sell multiple channels. What's cool about Shopify is like you can sell multiple channels at the same time. Everything gets linked into the same spot. You know what I mean? So you get these sales, um, these sales channels like the Amazon sales channel, or there's other apps too that you link up everything. And then pretty much all the sales go inside the, you know, Shopify. So it's good to, you know, you might be against Amazon, like, Oh, you know, you might be talking shit, but you can't beat them, join them. Right. So that's what I did. I just joined Amazon. I started selling my price and they do really good. And you kind of, and to be honest, you could up the price a little bit because they, they took a good chunk of the fees really high. Um, you can even up the price, and the customers will still buy just because they trust that name, Amazon, right? So you can't just depend on, on you know, Shopify, you can use Amazon, eBay, and they pretty much advertise for you already. I think that's a good advice to open up the door to other revenue streams, especially on a place like Amazon that already has the traffic baked in. I think a lot of companies we see that are doing really well aren't just dependent on one avenue, but open yeah. up to multi channels. So I think it's it, one thing that blew my mind here. I'm just going to recap this to you right now. This is a guy, so Jose's a guy who bought his first boot and resold it online. So he sold one pair of boots. Yeah. And within the last year, he sold $2.1 million worth of cowboy boots. So why, why don't you tell us what was a transitioning point where it was buy a boot, sell a boot and, and grind and hustle to the point where you were actually able to scale up the business and what kind of marketing strategies did you have to do to get there? Oh, cool, good question actually. I think you have to sell something that you really like and love. You can't just go over there for the, the money, right? Uh, the profit margin is really, really good on the, the boots, but 
that wasn't the reason I, I kind of really liked the actual boots. So you have to like what you do and love it and know everything about it. And pretty much, um, or pretty much it was, you know, sell for you. Um, but you have to love what you do. It's kind of just be like, oh, it's good profit right here. You know, it's going to just go down. But the the marketing strategies that I really use obviously was AdWords that I really picked up where Google shopping, um, but always do your homework before you go on there to do the ads. And it also was good on Facebook ads was really good. I did a bunch of videos for the different brands um, and just put the products on the, you know, the catalog page so they could shop. That was really important. I just didn't do one video for people as multiple for different people. So don't just focus like, oh, AdWords. I mean, Facebook, I did this video. I didn't get no return. It's like, well, that video, you can't get to everybody. Everybody has different tastes. You know what I mean? So Facebook was really good. And the same platform, obviously, Instagram was really good as well. I did the same, um, you know, same style. I just got into um, Pinterest, which is really good. Um, YouTube, I do YouTube ads as well. Um, I think the most important part is to know your audience. So you have to know what you, you're selling in order to find that audience. I think that's very important. YouTube ads, Pinterest ads, they actually just launched their, um, their remarketing um, dynamic ads. So if people don't check out on your cart, you know what I mean? You could show them a picture and you just kind of bug them and haunt them down for seven days, you could say. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. That's actually, that just happened this week where they gave me the option so I could um, do dynamic remarketing ads, which is really cool. So, oh, and another thing is, TikTok is on fire right now. Um, the reach is really, really organic. And I do recommend people to do that. You might feel weird at first, like what the hell is for kids, right? But I think if you figure out how to go about with your style, like for example, I saw cowboy boots, right? So what I do is do videos with cowboy boots, but use other trends that are hot, you know what I mean? So that's the most important part, yep. Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, like when I met you in New York, you said you were just getting started on TikTok. I know we were talking about that. We we're at a marketing conference. We we're talking about all these yeah. marketing ideas. And you were saying to me, you know, I'm just going to start on TikTok. I have a few followers. And how many do you have today? I have like 27,100, something like that. Yeah. But I just really recently pushed, started pushing the videos maybe like two months ago. Yeah, yeah that's incredible. So I, I know like I earlier on in the Emergent Mastery Facebook group, I shared a post of yours. It had over 100,000 views. And one of the things you just said to me today, just right now, two seconds ago, is that you got to love your brand. And yeah. I'm looking at your Instagram following. I know you have a massive Instagram following. What's your Instagram following at right now? I think it's uh, 47,000, something around there. You got 47,000 people on Instagram. You got 27,000 people on TikTok, a few thousand on YouTube as well. All yeah. these channels have a really big, robust audience and you grew these audiences quite quickly. I would say it's because you, like, it's very clear in all your content and your branding that you love the product you love the industry even just today you said that you got into it because you wanted to look cool wearing boots so you're like a big fan of the boots i think that comes across would you say that contributed a lot in your ability to build the audience and loyal community quickly uh, yeah absolutely i think it, it was you know it, not only did it look cool then i got into like the manufacturing part of it and then also like the design of it so i designed the, my own brand i was like dude it's so cool like you have to love it and the people will see it that also are into it will love it. And even if they don't, they see how much, how much you love it, then they'll pass it over to somebody like, Oh, this guy sells boots. He knows what he's doing, you know? So that's very important. I forgot to mention the, um, another marketing um, platform that I'm using was that SMS bump. I remember we were talking about that. Yeah. Um, so basically what that is, is um, it's a, so basically at checkout, they fill out, you know, the information and you could, they could sign up in order to get text messages. Right. So what I do is once they sign up, you know, you have a whole platform on SMS bump and you can actually remarket them, you know, if they, if they don't check out, for example, like say they put all their info, their, you know, their phone number and all that, but they don't check out, you could actually send them an abandoned cart reminder with a discount and they'll show the actual picture of the item. And like, hey man, you left some, you know, stuff in your cart. Here's actually a discount and it, uh, and it applies it automatically at checkout. So, uh, yeah, like let's let's take a stop to appreciate this strategy right now. Yeah. One of the things I said to Jose be before we got on the call today is I said uh, my favorite part about speaking to other merchants around the world and in California and where you know wherever anyone may be is I hope to learn something every day. Like this is all about knowledge sharing. This is a community. We're really trying to do this so that we can get new ideas and apply them to our business and all of us survive this and grow together. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, that's something that we have not been utilizing a lot is this SMS bump app specifically. So you're saying that you're saying that if somebody's on Shopify, 
they go add something to the cart and then they abandon, you can retarget with a text message through SMS bump. Yeah, exactly. So it captures their phone number because um, they already signed up to, you know, get notified and all that. So basically it, what it does is they don't check out and you can set it for hours. There's hours and times, however you want. Um, and then what you do is I set up for one hour, you know, and I don't bug the customer just once. It's like after an hour, here's a discount. If you decide to get it, here's 5% off or 10% off. It's already added for you. So when they click the link, it's already discounted and ready to go. And not only that, you already got their, you know, their phone number because I already agreed to give you the phone number. And then right now I got like maybe 22,000 phone numbers. So say it gets slow one day, right? And I'm like, oh shit, it's slow. What am I going to do, right? So I send out a, an email launch and you can add a picture on there. You could put, you know, emojis and all that and be like, oh, we're having a sale today. Boom, boom, boom. And then you send it out and it converts really good because you're in their face. Yeah, so I, I think like right now, I'm, I'm, and probably anyone who's watching this, it's like it, we're thinking, hey, that's a really amazing strategy. It sounds cool in practice. Tell us some of the results. Like how, what has it done for your business? It, it, it probably grew maybe like, uh, maybe maybe 15% about. Um, the return on investment is really good. It's not um, that pricey, but the, the abandoned cart, you know, it, it kind of went up a lot, like percentage wise. Um, but the most important part is that you already got their phone number already. So say, uh, in the, like I said, when it's slow, you can just be like, okay, it's slow. I have all these numbers. A lot of people don't, some people open email, some people don't, but when it's on their phone and they're like, oh, it's got a text. They're having the sales already there. It's like, boom, the conversion is ridiculous, you know, and all the discounts already apply that checkout. That's one of the most important things too. Incredible SMS bump everyone. We're going to have to probably get them in here for a webinar. Yeah. But, uh, I, th I think oh, we'll be checking that out. It's really good too. They're awesome. Cool. I think we'll be checking that out immediately. So let's yeah. talk about like, so let's talk about, you know, the, 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 the state of the times that we're in right now. I know yeah. it's really uncertain times. You are clearly a successful Shopify business. You've had a lot of successful strategies. It's amazing hearing your story. I would love to like see, see Jose back in the day selling boots at rodeos. And here you are today, the, the cowboy of Santa, Santa Clarita, uh, doing big volume boot sales. Um, so now that the pandemic has hit everybody, business are adapting. Did you see a major difference in your boot sales? And how did you adapt to, to any differences? That's probably the best question. So what happened, uh, around, when it barely happened, I, I took a big hit. It was probably the biggest hit I ever took money-wise. Um, that's one thing I do recommend people is never, uh, well, that's my thing. I never, I never bought nothing extra, like a, a Ferrari or a nice car, nothing like that. Cause I knew these times were going to come. Um, like I said, I took a, a big hit on the, the first week and it really hurt. I maxed out the credit cards. Luckily these companies that I work with, I had credit. I didn't, you know, use them all up before on dumb shit. So basically I had all this, um, I was okay for that one week. And then what I did was I was like, Okay, I'm slow as hell. What am I going to do? I can't send a, a sale uh, email because people don't want to get sold right now. What the heck am I going to do in order for to get sales, right? So I have a bunch of YouTube videos on how to clean your exotic boots, right? Your cowboy boots, how to clean the crocodile boots, how to clean the ostrich boots. So I was like, okay, I can't sell them right now. So what can I do, right? So I had to be... Um, more creative on how to, you know, get some revenue because it's fucking slow. You can't do a sale. They're going to be like, oh, this guy's hungry for some damn money. You know, you can't ask for it like that. So what I did was I just like, you know what? I'm going to send a video on how to clean your exotic cowboy boots during this these hard times, right? I was like, so I wrote a little comment like, oh, I know it's um, hard times right now. You might have some time. Um, here's a few videos on how to clean your exotic or your, your boots, right? And after that day, it was a Friday, uh, after that day, it was a Friday and people just started buying stuff, like buying boots again. Right. I was really surprised, but really grateful about that. And, um, and I noticed maybe like a, that whole week was doing good. And maybe about a week ago or yeah, like a week ago, I see my sales just climbing up obviously because all those, or the day they closed everything down, you know, they everything shut down. That first day was okay. But after that, I seen the sales going up, going up and I was really, um, surprised but then again, all that experience that I use in those 10 years from the ads and all that, it was kind of paying off, you know, because the competition kind of, you know, went down or everybody had either people that did have money because there's money out there. It's not just, you know, some people don't, some people do, but there's money out there. And if you put yourself out there in the attention, then you're going to get that sale. Right. So 
that's the most important part that those 10 years that I put in are kind of finally paying off. So that, that's it. Yeah. And you'd say like, that, that's really interesting. I think like, are you, is this month or last month, are these some of your best months ever? Or what, what is it compared to like a, a, a good month? Oh, good job. Ago? Yeah. The, um, this yesterday alone, I, um, it was probably one of the highest days from the whole month. I had a good, um, it was really good yesterday. I was really surprised. I was like, Oh, this is crazy. But you know, like I said, it was all that hard work that you put in and, I do recommend people doing the, the ads on Facebook and Instagram because everybody's on their phone right now, you know? So it was a Absolutely. big difference. It was a big, I was really surprised, but really happy um, that my sales picked up because it was pretty scary that week. I think for us, like, honestly, I'm, I'm a business owner. There's a lot of business owners that are in this group. I'm speaking to a lot of business owners and even not even just business owners, everybody, everybody, yeah. employees, staff, um, you know, professionals everywhere. Everybody kind of recoiled into a cave and hide hid in a cave and wanted to hibernate for a little bit i know that was certainly me like when everything was happening i was like okay are we gonna lose all of our clients is our business doomed right now yeah and we kind of just took a moment to pause we wanted to be really cautious with our wording we wanted to be really cautious with how we approach things Uh and then all of a sudden we realized you know as an e-commerce agency we're like a lot of our clients need us right now so we had to like dust off our fear and show show up with courage and try, try and lead by example so it sounds like you were able to do that too. You saw some trends. You saw that people actually want to buy. I mean, we're in this e-commerce industry to help make people's lifestyles better. So if yeah. they want boots right now, uh, that'd be awfully rude to deny them that one luxury in life. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Did you, um, did you feel a big hit that week as well? Or how was it for you? Yeah, I think like we did, like definitely there was a handful of clients. So we're an e-commerce agency. We yeah. pride ourselves on mostly working with Shopify uh, businesses, but mm-hmm. we've had, like, we've been around since 2011. We've had some legacy clients who've been around for a long time. If they were outside of e-commerce, they were the first ones to pause things because they had to shut down like construction sites and hotels and all these wow. kind of things that were impacted so hard. But a lot of our e-commerce clients were huddling together. Like our team was like, okay, we got to be there for all of our merchants right now because yeah. people are still buying online. We're seeing a lot of trends, a lot of data where this, this industry is not being hit. It's actually the one that needs to be there for people right now. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we got hit. And then we adapted, we adapted some things. We are bringing on new projects. So That's I good. think it's a good takeaway for any business is you may get hit in one area, but where can you adapt to mm-hmm. provide something with something new of value that maybe you didn't offer before? Yeah, for sure. I think it's the most important is to adapt, like you said, and it's either you give up or you adapt pretty much. <laughs> you have two options. <laughs> yeah, like, I think like, so this was another thing you said that really spit out to me. You're talking about the how to, it was how to clean your exotic boots. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. and you made and you made a you made a video, and you know I, this is a really good time to do top of the funnel content, like build yeah. awareness, do videos, mm-hmm. do signups, do courses, all yeah. kinds of things. How much traction did you get on that? How to clean your boot program, and did it lead to any sales after that? Like you said, you, uh-huh. you hinted at it, but what did that look like? Yeah, it was really good. The sales just picked up after that. We had like I have it on my blog post, and it had like maybe fifteen thousand people went on it, so it was pretty good. You know 15,000 I mean? people watch yeah. this, how to yeah. clean your exotic boot. <laughs> yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. So I think, I think that says a lot. Like I think mo- most people are at home right now. A lot of people are spending time online. Let's make amazing content. Like I want to, I, I want to go watch that video. Maybe you can share the link to that video in the comments on Facebook in the group after this. Yeah, for sure. I'll definitely do that. Yeah. That's the most important part right now. I think as an agency, of course, you got to help the, the, you know, your, your clients, but I think as a, as a, as a store, as an online store, you can't, sell right now i think you gotta just do a lot of content you know what i mean get more interactive with the customer and then if they have that extra money to buy something then they're gonna buy it but don't sell it <laughs> very important absolutely yeah so like i got another question for you so it's really our hope that somebody can have a takeaway that they can apply tomorrow from our conversation today so far it's definitely sms bump go mm-hmm. and integrate that into your customer journey get it into the abandoned cart sequence yeah. um but what else? Like you, you talked about ads. You said my, my 10 years of ad experience helped me. Um, my Facebook ad experience helped me. What kind of things are you, what kind of ads are you seeing that are, have been effective? Is it kind of like your everyday ad and it's just working well right now? Or have you switched your ad strategy at all? Or what, what are you seeing? Um, to be honest, uh, Google Shopping's always been good. Um, once you get the hang of it, it's probably one of the best ones. Um, Facebook, it kind of, I noticed that the competition wasn't there. So the click per you know conversion the, the ppc was a lot ch- cheaper this past month but the conversion was really high so it was really good you know so i think um just because a, a lot of people just pulled out instead of putting in 
the Facebook ads and the Instagram ads when you should is people just, you know, you just got to wait a little bit and just keep pushing it in there and do the right content. I think the return will be good, but a lot of people pulled out. So you're, you know, PPC might go lower, but the conversion is going to be higher because you're the only one in there. I think that's, this is, yeah, I was watching this uh, podcast with Gary V the mm -hmm. other morning It just popped up on my feed, decided to watch it. I like Gary V, yeah. but he was saying that, you know, he's saying, everyone's asking what do i do as a small business right now and he said if you're in e-commerce so immediately my ears perked up he's talking about e-commerce he says <laughs> if you're in e-commerce right now he's like i would be quadrupling if not seven xing my ad spend right now yeah and he thought like no one wants to exploit the scenario right now that's not what this is about we want to be really sensitive to what everybody's going through yeah. but if the ad spend is coming down we've given so much money as small businesses to google and facebook if we're going to get more results out of them right now like mm -hmm. we, we definitely want to capitalize on that as a small business. And ultimately we want to stay in business. Yeah. Like this isn't about, this isn't about tricking people or manipulating anybody. It's saying we're going to be here and get our amazing products to our amazing customers. Yeah. And if the ad spend is cheap right now and we want to stay alive as a business, let's take advantage of that opportunity at the very least. Yeah, for sure. And you know, my strategy was a little different. I already had, I was already paying pretty high on um, PPCs for my ads. Um, so what I did was like, you know what? A lot of people are backing now. I'm not going to go down either. I'm just going to keep it up there high. And then a lot of the other people that were up there keep, you know, that were with me on there, they lower their bids. So my stay the same with my conversion. Like I said, went, you know, ridiculous. There's one other thing that um, Gary Vee came out with is that it's called community.com. It's basically like a text messaging platform. I really wanted to get on there just because you, it's kind of like MSS, MSS bump, but on this um, platform, you're actually really texting back and forth. It's not just, you know, doing a launch, a text launch, and then you can't reply back to them, you know? So I'm looking for any platform that you can just text back and forth. That would be awesome just to be in contact with the actual customer. You know what I mean? I think that's one of the biggest things. Basically, to what, what I'm saying is mobile is gonna is on fire and the conversion is really good. And once you have their phone number, you know, it's right there for you. Are you kind of like a cowboy Gary V? Because... <laughs> you know what i listen to everything he says like I, like i said that's why i go to his events sometimes because i feel guilty like i'm gonna make you feel guilty to you buy some shit that i sell right so what i do is like when i when he's live i'm like i already know what he says but i'm gonna go to his event is because all the info he don't tell you how to do it but he tells you what to do and then you it's up to you to do the research you know what i mean uh, yeah i think the one thing i'm noticing and the reason i even said that is because you did google adwords for a long time you did facebook ads for a long time those things everybody knows that they're working but yeah. then you tried out SMS bump. You wanted to communicate with your customers mm -hmm. on a new channel, like text messaging. And then you went and tried out uh, like TikTok. And now you have 100,000 people watching your videos. So yeah. you're kind of like pioneering new tools and new ways always. Has that yeah. been like a part of your growth strategy? Yeah, absolutely. I always, I always try everything. You know what I mean? And I give it about... It, I, I give, I try everything, man. I, did, I try to do that location um, based on uh, marketing with the apps. That didn't really um, work that good. So basically I try everything and I try it for a month and I try to do as much as I can in order to make it work. I try everything. I put everything man, on it. And if I'm like, okay, this shit didn't work. I tried it for a month. I did everything. I spent a lot of money already. Um, but, and if it doesn't work, then I pull out. So like, like you said, like Gary says, it's, you're not losing nothing to try it. So you just do it, and if it doesn't work, then you just pull out. It's real simple. Absolutely, I like that. Yeah. Okay, so I think we're, we're coming near the half an hour mark, and I really want to end this with some really good advice for anybody who's going to be watching this video. You know, there's a lot of merchants right now who are still, like, new. They're still getting off the ground. Like, yeah. what is, like, the one thing that they should go and do tomorrow? Content, man. I think content about what they're doing. Um, and about their story, pretty much. I think that'd be most important part. Uh, if you just do videos on what you do, what you sell, what it, you know, you might not be able to, you know, go to like your, your lockdown, right? And your store's closed and, you know, drive this stuff on from home that will get, bring value to the, you know, your customers. You know I mean? You have no, right now you don't have an option unless you want to give up. So I think you should do like content on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, or try TikTok. You probably never even got on TikTok yet. <laughs> so just try that and use, you know, different stuff. Just do it. Yeah. And yeah. So basically uh, like, I love what you're saying. Cause you, I look at your Instagram page. This is not a guy who's messing around. This is a guy who loves the crap. Like yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a link to your TikTok page. Those videos are remarkable. Yeah, it's not yeah. a guy clowning around. You're not the clown at the rodeo. You're the cowboy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And <laughs> right? was, so 
yeah, I, I just be personal, you know what I mean? And, and people like seeing that personal side and do different content for different platforms. I think that's very important. Yeah, and I think like like you said, you got the TikTok following, you got the Instagram following. I'm going to share links to all these in the Facebook comments because all those accounts, the content is part none. It's just incredible stuff, and it really comes out in your brand. So uh, everything we're seeing right now, if you're going to be a if the content's going to be at the core of your brand strategy, now is the time to do it. You got a lot more eyeballs on there. You're going to get a lot more reach. You could build bigger audiences right now. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. It's so much opportunity and a lot of people get scared. I don't even edit like my videos on how to clean boots and all that, that stuff. I don't even edit them. I just put them out there. I do not edit shit. Like it's just out there, you know, because people like that real stuff. Um, I mean, and if you love what you do, you're already going to know what you're saying. You know what I mean? It's not going to be like, uh, 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 uh. it's going to be like, boom, 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 boom. And I don't even, you can see my fingers stop in the video stuff like that. More live stuff where people enjoy all that real stuff. So don't okay, worry. So I got a, I, yeah, I got a question from Kaiza in Calgary. She's well. She, all she she said, creating the first TikTok video must be weird. Ah, uh, yeah. It, I I keep it because I'm like, oh my god, it was horrible. It's like a, a song, and I'm kind of like dancing. I was like, man, I don't even do that. Shit. I don't even dance like that, right? So <laughs> I kept it on there, but I don't even dance on my videos anymore. I kind of just go off of like, you know, similar stuff. But I don't dance on there. So it's kind of you don't have to dance because everybody thinks it's about dancing in there. You kind of just got to go with what you like and what you feel comfortable and what you're good at. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a, like, there's this term that we've always known in marketing. Mm -hmm. Like at, at one time before there was Gangnam Style. Yeah. Like, <laughs> one of the one of the most viewed videos on YouTube. It was it was the number one viewed video on YouTube like before the Gangnam Styles and the Justin yeah. Bieber's. And it was a guy making Play-Doh sculptures. And mm -hmm. all you could see is his hand making Play-Doh. And the mm -hmm. term we call that is operational transparency. Yeah. Like people love seeing things get made. So like when I see you with a boot, like cleaning it and scrubbing yeah. it, I'm like, I'm just like drooling at the mouth. Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing I, I, I used to come on, on the videos, but I didn't see that a lot of people interaction with this. So I, you know what I do? I'm just gonna do my hands and that's it. And that's what I did too. If you don't feel comfortable on camera, you just do your hands. You know what I mean? If you just do the product, if you don't feel comfortable with something, just do what you're good at. You know what I mean? I think that's the most important part. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So Kaiser followed up. She said, do you advertise, talk about the business or just create fun content? I guess I'll check out your TikTok. And I, I guess you kind of answered that. You like she's what was saying, the question you, again? Sorry, I missed um, it. She's, she's, she's saying, do you advertise and talk about your business or do you just create fun content? I do both. Um, I ever, I do kind of, I do personal stuff. I have a Hispanic community there. So I do these Mexican jokes too. Um, and then also, you know, I have like some country music or there's some other videos where it's like Monday, Tuesday, right? Wednesday, it says a week, the whole week. And so what I do is every, now that Monday I put a, I have a boot on and then Tuesday it switches, Wednesday it switches. So you kind of, you know, I do both, you know what I mean? But mostly it's both for sure. Business and personal on yeah, TikTok. And, and, and the name of your account is like yeehawcowboy.com, yeah. right? Yeah, so it is business focused, but you're throwing some personal character in as well. Yes, exactly. Just because, like I said, the, the customer, you want to connect it with them. On Instagram, I, um, I don't, do too personal but on tiktok i do because i noticed there was a big hispanic community that was following me already and they like funny jokes and shit so that's why i did it both absolutely i gotta come check out some of these jokes and learn spanish <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> <laughs> so we got it we, yeah, we got someone else uh sherry lawler she said i got some abandoned cart action off sms bump yeah yeah it's really so good she, man yeah she's saying that that worked out all right i think we're all gonna need to go and try that out after yeah and i'm just gonna double check to see if there's any more questions here i think that is all well, unless anybody else watching has a question you can plug it into the facebook page otherwise i definitely encourage you to go check out jose's accounts like this is an inspiration for me i'm i'm I, like after meeting you i was like oh yeah what was his website again like you know yeehaw cowboy i gotta go check it out and i was like man, kidding, man. That, that like how many SKUs do you got on that website that's a massive website oh, that? How, how many product SKUs do you got on your shopify site oh uh, probably like I think I have 4,500 products. It's a, it's a massive store. It's a big, yeah. from one, from one boot to 4,000. <laughs> yeah. And I drop ship everything. The only ones I keep here is in my garage, which is my personal brand. Other than that, everything gets drop shipped. And that right. was one of the things, like, you know, that was one of the ways that you disrupted the industry. Like you were saying, just to recap is that these major brands wouldn't sell to you unless you had a brick and mortar location. Mm -hmm. So you went and opened up your rodeo booth, the live pop-up <laughs> rodeo booth yeah. that became your store. They provided yeah. products to you directly and you ended up drop shipping through that strategy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's always a way, man. That's the most important part. You know? Awesome. Do you, do you have a boot there to show us right now? Is there a boot oh, yeah, there? Yeah, here, let me see. Oh, right here. 
Let me check this cool one right here. Hold on, let me see. This is one of my like favorite test bikes. This is one of the ones I designed here. Let me see. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's all crocodile tail. See that? Amazing. Yeah. It has a little crocodile on the bottom there. You see that? That's a nice boot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's a Jose design. You designed that one? Yeah, I designed this one. Yeah, it's all like leather inside too. It has a logo on the inside. I don't know if you can see it right there. Yeah. Cool, right? That, 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 that's, a, <laughs> that's a bad boot. It's a bad yeah. boot. <laughs> yeah, so I keep these. This brand, I keep it right here in my garage. But other than that, is drop ship everything, man. Awesome. Cool. Well, Jose, thank you so much. Honestly, it's so great talking to you every time. I definitely learned some things from you today. I'm inspired to go triple down on content and try out TikTok and try out SMS Bump. Yeah. And not and I'm not afraid to advertise. I yeah. hope others aren't as well after hearing you. Yeah, for sure, man. Anytime, man. It's a pleasure talking to you. I'll see you on the next event for sure. We'll meet up, have some beers, hang out. <laughs> sounds, sounds really, really awesome, Jose. All right, cool, man. Sounds good. See you, everybody. Okay, thanks. Bye. Yeah, thanks for joining us today.